This show is, is truly demanding in the sense of creative decision making. This is a tough gig. It's a tough book to adapt, but it's a big undertaking. It's a humongous budget. One of the things people have come to expect from the world of his dark materials are these incredible worlds that we create. They've done such a meticulous job. They've built these worlds. We go into the different hangars and we're literally walking into a different world. The logistical feat of, <laughs> of making it happen is extraordinary, but the design is, is breathtaking. Season three definitely becomes more complex. We've stayed relatively within realms of reality in seasons one and two, but season three goes through many worlds. In season three, we visit a Gunway's world, which is where all the battles are happening. We visit Bone White world, which is like this white desert where Will and Lyra stay for a couple of nights. We visit the Malefa world, Ezreal's Republic, and we have Will's world at the end of the show. Our grounded vision for the show is consistently challenged. These are just such complex places to overlap and how to make an audience be able to enjoy, relate to them without pushing them away. And I think exploring those places and trying to make good decisions has been the most complicated part of the process for me. I think the craft is pretty much done for. And how will we get back to the Republic? We'll be able to figure something out. I think what's brilliant about what the team have done in this show is that they have world built with so much thought, so much consideration, so much detail and so much love lavished on it. You really get the sense that they have poured everything into it, you know, like they too love it. So you walk onto this world and it doesn't always just feel like a set. Hey, Mark. When I'm in the scene, I'm fiddling and looking at all the little bits and pieces because I'm fascinated. I'm like, where did they find these things? I don't know how his mind works to bring all of this combination of things, both futuristic and the past, but he does it. As an actor, and especially in the show when you have to be imagining like 50% of the characters, it's really helpful to have something to hold on to and to know that that's what it's going to look like and that's what it looks like right now. It helps you just to step into that person's circumstances and that person's reality. They're so different in feel and in texture, the worlds. I feel unbelievably lucky being able to walk around and actually sort of touch the things and see how complete the worlds are. The sort of tiny, weeny elements of reality that you see by just being here and, and touching them is, is really incredible. Lyra! I really think they've outdone themselves with the land of the dead. It's like this enormous maze made of kind of dead found objects with walls all the way up the side and you can sort of pick out items here and there. It's really unlike anything I've ever seen. It's dark and caverns and just these great mounds of rock and mounting and creatures lurking behind. I got the impression that everybody went very dark and things were very somber. It's almost like everyone's experiencing the space itself. Welcome to the Republic of Heaven, Commander. As we are Republic, it is a military encampment. It's a space for science and ingenuity and for his military forces to gather. Even though it has a very futuristic feel to it, many of the artifacts and the things that Azrael uses are quite period. I think that's a nice combination that they've been able to conjure in, in that world. The Malefa trees are the giant trees in the Malefa land. They stand at, currently I think they're 100 metres tall. So we were basically building the bottom 15 metres with the roots coming out and then the ground cover coming out of that. Something that's organic but scaled up is incredibly complex to get right. It's just amazing. I'm just really proud. It must be strange being here like this with me. I love the cave at the beginning because we see Mrs. Coulter as a totally different person and that setting and that location really helped. It's called St. Govan's Cove and it's on the Pembrokeshire coast in Wales and it's stunning. It's this little stone chapel set into the rock face. 
And so what we did, we expanded it. We rebuilt the chapel interior completely, stone by stone, really. We made an exact replica of it in the studio. And then we went and shot at the real location. It feels like it's in the middle of nowhere. It creates a sense of serenity. And actually for Mrs. Coulter, who's always on the move, that was really essential for that relationship. The intention craft works through clarity. Your mind is muddled. I like the intention craft hanger with the intention craft sitting in it, which I thought would just be a big old CG thing, but they actually built the intention craft. Then it is pretty much as described in the books as well. It's like a big old spider that you fly around. It's quite an enjoyable space when you're in it with that machine because you get all the way down to the heart of technology that Azrael's created. The visual evolution is, is really all just driven by the story around the characters. The kind of environments around them are the, the cloak for them to play out their developing character arcs and journeys. And there's been hard work, blood, sweat and tears, sacrifice, and ultimately it's, it's, it's very, very exciting to get to this point. And at the same time, I'm very, very tired.